Uh, welcome to the ECG Ignited. So, we call this uh, ECG course as ECG Ignited because we try to ignite the knowledge of ECG in you. So, this is a basic ECG learning series. So, ECG always surrounded by a mystery. So, because uh, we always think the ECG is a very complex subject and very, very difficult subject. That is why we have never made an attempt to go into the depth of the ECG. So, what we are going to do in this uh, particular course is make you understand the basic principles of ECG and the abnormalities of ECG and try to make you believe that the ECG is not a very complex thing. It is one of the easiest thing we can interpret and diagnose and manage provided you know some basic knowledge in ultracardiogram. That is what we are going to give in this particular course. So, I will give you a brief introduction about the course. So, what are the topics we are going to cover in this course? In this course, first of all, we are going to see how the ECG is produced. First of all, let me tell you that I am actually assuming that you do not know anything about the ECG. So, that is why I am beginning with the basics of the ECG. So, the first four topics are the basics of the ECG. One is how the ECG is produced. We are looking at the conduction system. We are going to look at the conduction system of the heart, D and repolarization. Then second topic is going to be how to see the heart through the ECG. So, we will understand the lead systems. Then how to measure the heart through the ECG? We do the calculations or the measurements of the various ECG waveforms. Then the fourth topic is to how to find the direction of the cardiac impulse is the calculation of electrical axis. Otherwise, we like to know in which direction the net cardiac impulse is traveling inside the heart. So, these are the four topics we are going to do in the basics and subsequently we look at the other programs. So, the next program will be we are trying to look at this as the QRS abnormalities in the form of chamber enlargement, then QRS abnormality in the width and the QRS abnormality in the fascicular blocks and advanced conduction disturbances. Then we come back to the coronary heart disease and try to see how to assess the perfusion of the heart and how to assess the uh, viability of the heart. Then of course, we look at the abnormal rhythm or the arrhythmias in four topics, which is the premature beats, narrow QRS complex tachycardia, white QRS complex tachycardia and approach to narrow pulse, uh, slow pulse. And of course, the last topic is going to give you a overall reading summary, including all these 13 topics and try to give you overall idea of how to read the ECG. So, these are the topics we are going to cover in this particular course of ECG Ignited. So, let us know about the electrocardiogram. So, we cannot begin a course on electrocardiogram without paying tribute to this uh, wonderful scientist who is a Dutch scientist, a Dutch doctor, Willem Eindhoven, who got us the wonderful investigation in 1902 through this big mission. So, this is the first ECG mission Willem Eindhoven devised and you can see the poor assistant of Willem Eindhoven has to put his hands in a huge pot of saline which served as electrodes those days. Today you see the sleek metal plates as electrodes but those days these are the electrodes and you took two and a half hours to record an electrocardiogram and took two and a half days to interpret an electrocardiogram. And for this wonderful discovery, he got the Nobel Prize in 1924. So, today we see the beautiful sleek ECG machines now. ECG machines have become so small and you can take the ECG machine to anywhere you want to record the ECG and you can get everything in two seconds or in three seconds. So, after 100 or more years, we have come to this stage of recording the ECG in advanced manner. But nevertheless, the importance of the ECG has not lasted for more than 100 years. No branch of medicine has witnessed so much of advances like cardiology. Every day we have something going on in cardiology. So, in spite of all the advances, ECG continued to be there continue to live and have has its place in the cardiology diagnosis in spite of so much advances. No other investigation so far is able to replace an ultracardiogram in the, in the evaluation of chest pain, arrhythmias and so on. 
So, next 100 years also ECG is not going to go off. So, that is why it is very, very important to know about the electrocardiogram. And second thing I want to always say is that the electrocardiogram is no longer an investigation in the domain of a cardiologist. So, everybody irrespective of their specialty, be an obstetrician or an orthopedician, they must know about the ECG. So, ECG is a basic investigation for any doctor who qualifies to do a medical practice. That is what our aim is to teach the ECG to everybody and not only the physicians or the cardiologist. So, this is the PQRST, the Villa Mainto one. Uh, produced in 1902 and it has got the same almost same relationship today's electrocardiogram of PQRST. So, in 1902, this is the electrocardiogram of 1902 and people wondered why Villa Mainthoven started with a P. So, it is customary to start with A, a B, C, D or X, Y, Z, but Villa Mainthoven started with a P. This is because Villa Mainthoven wanted to be different and he wanted to start with the middle of the alphabet which is O. But he did not want to start with 0, so he selected the next letter as P, Q, R, S, T. That is why the first waveform of electrocardiogram starts with P. This is one of the stories why the electrocardiogram waveforms are starting with P. So, first of all you must know what is an electrocardiogram. Electrocardiogram is recording of the electrical activities of the heart recording view electrical information about the heart. As you know, heart is a pump. Just your pump, motor pump pumps water outside, the heart pumps blood outside. So, naturally, it has to have an electric current which has to be converted into mechanical energy. So, the ECG gives you the electrical properties of the heart by which I mean the for the heart where the electricity is produced or the current is produced at what frequency it is produced and what pathway it is traveling, with what speed it is traveling. So, whether it is reaching the appropriate place at right time, whether that appropriate place is responding this to current correctly. So, this is the information you get from electrocardiogram, electrical properties of the heart. Whereas, echo gives you the mechanical properties of the heart by which we mean it tells you how the heart is contracting and relaxing how the valves are opening and closing, is there any intracardiac abnormalities like holes in the heart or valvular stenosis, valvular regurgitations, pumping systolic function of the heart, relaxation function of the heart, heart's dimensions, intracardiac pressures. So, all this mechanical information are given by echocardiogram. So, that is why it is very, very important to do both this investigation to say the heart is normal. 